I'm just wondering, how are you assessing Russia's cybersecurity efforts so far in this uh, war in Ukraine? Well, I think we're seeing what we expected. We've clearly seen cyber as a, a tool in the Russia playbook for quite some time, along with disinformation. And we've seen them exercise that in this particular campaign. I think that what I would credit um, as the difference maker is that the stout defense made it, mounted by the Ukrainian has been impressive. But some say that perhaps uh, Russia's cyber army has not been as destructive or as effective as one would have expected. Uh, has the U.S. played a role in mitigating that risk from uh, Russia's uh, cyber attacks? Well, I think the Ukrainians certainly have played a role in diminishing the uh, effectiveness of the Russian attacks. Um, I think it's also hard to mount a campaign, and the Russians have shown that they are not perhaps as competent as they might have imagined, both in the physical world and the cyber world. But at the end of the day, I would, cre I would credit the Ukrainians with mounting a very impressive defense. Are you expecting Russia to perhaps enhance or even boost the cyber attacks going forward, given where we are in this in this war right now? Well, for as long as Russia persists in this egregious behavior, I think that cyber will be in their playbook, and so I would I would think that this would continue apace. Chris, you know, many people have said that uh, World War Three would be a cyber war uh, ultimately. Does this kibosh that theory in some ways? I don't think that um, kind of those who have studied this space have uh, thoughtfully said that uh, cyber would constitute a World War III. I think that we have always known that cyber is an instrument of power that can and is used right, to achieve end purposes. Um, oftentimes we find that cyber is used below what I would call the use of force, um, but it's a, it's a tool that's used in, in, in combination with other tools, and therefore I don't think that you should think of it as cyber on cyber, or for that matter, to think of it as something that changes at the end of the day the outcomes that uh, one nation can achieve against another. So tell me, Chris, let's just move it along. How does it work, in other words, when we look at, let's say, elections, and how do you protect yourself against a cyber attack during elections? Of course, we've all heard the stories of in being uh, these results like Brexit and Trump's election being actually influenced by uh, cyber disinformation and the like. Uh, just give us a sense of how it all works and whether actually the protections are fit for purpose now. Yeah, it's a great question, Rish. I think at the end of the day, it's not so mysterious. It's the old-fashioned way. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think to the extent that you kind of take some care to understand what you depend upon digital infrastructure to do, the internet to do, um, and you make thoughtful choices about whether the resilience and robustness of that system is up to the game, um, you can invest in your own defense by essentially you know, participating in your own defense. Stout passwords, use of encryption, kind of making sure you understand what you've actually placed in the internet and, and what expectations you have from it. And then a collective defense of what results. Essentially a private-public collaboration is what we're arguing for, that we should essentially treat this just like we do any other domain of interest, which is if you have resilience and you have a collective defense on top of that, you can essentially navigate this to achieve your aspirations. We shouldn't be the least bit intimidated by threats in this space. In the end, it is about cybersecurity standards, right, Chris? I mean, uh, we had one uh, former Pentagon software chief who said that uh, in some of your departments in the U.S., uh, the level is at kinder level level, kindergarten level. I mean, has improvement been, been made, and how are you looking at it? Well, there have been significant improvements made, but they're not enough. Um, I think that we have some analogs at, at our disposal. Uh, just about every country that I'm aware of has taken a look at their automobile and their highway systems and improved the resilience by design of automobiles with air safety bags and lock brakes and the road systems to make sure that they're safe to drive. But at the end of the day, people need to actually thoughtfully use those devices to ensure that they defensively drive. Cyberspace is no different. We can build resilience and robustness in, but there's still a people component that's very, very important. For the private sector, though, for the most part of it, it is still voluntary. How, how do you push ahead? How do you ensure? How do you get to the standard that you want? Well, what you see emerging across the world um, in various nations is a combination of market forces um, and voluntary activity um, and increasingly governments standing in to say that there are some non-discretionary features just like we have with airplanes and automobiles and drugs and therapeutics. I think that's what you'll see play out in this space as well. Uh, what's going on with ransom attacks these days, uh, 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 Chris? And, you know, again, how do you perhaps block them and find out who's behind them and uh, take punitive measures? 
Well, I think ransomware attacks are still a force in the world, certainly a force in and through cyberspace. Um, criminal activities still are ongoing. Um, and to the extent that individuals and organizations have taken some efforts to improve their resilience and robustness, we've seen in some cases a diminution of that. But, but it's still ongoing. Um, we conducted at the White House a meeting of many nations last October to try to collectively address the underpinning issues that are associated with this. Um, sanctuaries that are granted to criminals, um, kind of free activities in cyberspace that allow for the acquisition and transfer of resources, um, and to some extent a, a failure to invest in the resilience and robustness. Just having a backup system um, for an organization or an individual can defeat right, the end game purpose of a ransomware attack. So it's a system, and we have to address that system by addressing all of the facets that indicate weakness in it. Before we let you go, Chris, I just want to ask on uh, the U.S. ban on Huawei. I mean, it has to do with intelligence and data. A year on since that ban, what have you learned and what's the way forward? I think this is less about Huawei than it is about whether um, nations should have some confidence in the vendors who populate the critical infrastructure of, of, their, of their systems. Um, whether it's Huawei or others, we need to look not just at the economics of the situation, but the performance of those vendors, the security, um, wherewithal of those vendors, and the rule of law that pertains to the conduct of those vendors um, in whatever nations are hosting them. Um, each nation needs to make a choice based upon that variety of factors, not economics alone.